And we got to start with Colorado Buffaloes, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They are without a doubt the the showstopper in the Pac-12 this season. They went one and eleven last year, one and eight in conference play, and that one win over California was a rock fight. It was a miracle that they won that game. But quite literally, everything has changed at Colorado, right? Deion Sanders comes over. He brings with him Sean Lewis, the former head coach at Kent State. Did not get fired. Did not get let go by Kent State, but just walked out the door. Said, nope, I'm going to go to Boulder. I'm going to be the offensive coordinator for Dion. And this offense is going to be oh so much fun. Uh, Charles Kelly comes over from Alabama to be the defensive coordinator. Overall, this team was dreadful last season. And they need to uh, overhaul just about everything in order to be competitive. The good news is they kind of have. And so for Colorado fans who are are wondering where they're going to slot in, in 2023 hopefully this breakdown gives you a little bit more clarity now you've got two competing factors you've got a lot of talent that is coming through the transfer portal but you also have a brutal schedule and we'll dive into that 2023 schedule coming up in just a minute uh team strength for this ball club the offense should score a lot of points and we're going to get into the offense here in just a second but sean lewis combined with some of these skill position players that are coming in should do standards at quarterback out McCaskill at, at running back, Cavassia Smoke at running back, plus a very talented wide receiver core. Like this should be a team that can put up points with the best of them. The, the weakness is going to be the interior of both the offensive and the defensive. Now, the defense is going to be kind of talented in parts. I think they're going to have a great edge rush uh, this season. I think their linebackers, their secondary should be very talented. But as far as stopping the run and having a consistent presence up the middle, I worry a little bit about that. Offensively, I've mentioned Shadur Sanders, one of the top FBS quarterbacks the last two years at Jackson State playing for primetime. His dad threw for over 7,000 yards at Jackson State. Didn't quite get Jackson State a championship, but got them very, very close uh, two years in a row. Uh, McCaskill comes over from Houston. Cavassier Smoke, a very talented, lightning-quick running back from Kentucky. And then the, the wide receiver core is going to be a mix of a lot of guys. Travis Hunter is going to be the showstopper. He's going to play on both sides of the football just as much as he can. And then you have Xavier Weaver and Jimmy Horn from South Florida as well. Jimmy Horn kind of had a lot more fanfare around his recruitment once he went in the portal because he contemplated going to so many big programs. But Xavier Weaver had over 15 yards of catch last season. He should be wide receiver one uh, for the Buffaloes this year. Defensively, I mentioned their struggles last year. They were dead last in the country. They gave up over 44 and a half points a game, which is criminal. Uh, and a lot of those guys were told by Prime on his first day here, hey, hit the portal. You're not going to be playing. We don't really want you here. And, uh, you know, that, that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but uh, it has gotten a lot of roster spots cleared. The stars on that side, I mentioned Travis Hunter. He's going to play both ways. He'll be a cornerback and a wide receiver for them. And then a lot is being made of five-star freshman Cormani McLean was committed to Miami for a long time. Now has uh, has flipped to Colorado, and he should be the other starting corner this year. I mentioned the edge rushers, Derek McClendon from FSU, Savelle Smalls from Washington. There are a couple of stars that can bring a, a great quarterback pressure to this defense. Uh, and then linebackers, Brendan Gant and Levante Bentley uh, from FSU and from Clemson, respectively kind of round out that unit. So Garrett, there's a lot of transfers, right? That's that is first and foremost the story here. The question is not is Colorado talented enough to win six, seven games and get to a bowl game? It's can they gel quickly enough to then overcome this schedule? And if you pull up that schedule, it's a tough one, right? You start at TCU, you play at Oregon at or versus USC before the bye week and then UCLA, Oregon State, Washington State, Utah to finish it. I'm really having a hard time getting Colorado 2-6, 2-7 wins, despite what a lot of fans on the internet are saying. Yeah, well, and the, the great thing about our offseason is that the Colorado fans have given us plenty to talk about and have done a great job interacting. Uh, and they've certainly dominated the talking season, but now it's time to play. And I, I can get them to five and seven. That's where I have them right now. 
I have them going five and seven this next year. And, and I think that it'll be a pretty successful year for them. You have to remember they won one game. If you look over there at their schedule, you know, they got a lot of red. There's a whole lot of red and a lot of L's on that schedule. And I, I get it. Everything's new, but you have to put it in context as well. It's not like those fans weren't fans of this team last year that they've been used to watching Colorado lose a lot of games. Um, and not very many of them by small margins either. And, and so, you know, I, I think you have to look at this and say five wins for Colorado would be a massive step in the right direction. But again, it's just about managing expectations, figuring out, you know, kind of what, what you should expect from this team. When I look at this Colorado team, I think you can expect basically two things to be true. I think everything pass game for them is going to go really, really well. And I think everything run game for them is going to go really, really poorly. I think when it comes to the pass game, I think Shadur Sanders is a capable quarterback. I think he's pretty good. It's still yet to be seen how he transitions to the Power 5 level and how he's going to play against not necessarily elite defenses in the Pac-12, but better defenses than he's faced with better talent and better guys coming off the edge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's still yet to be seen how that all gels together, right? You have to look at Travis Hunter, you know, obviously coming over as well. Um, big help getting him over but you have guys like you know jimmy horn xavier we were, we're still waiting to see what that looks like how that offense flows i think it's going to go really well i think that they're going to be able to pass the ball well i think they're going to be able to you know create some mismatches i think travis hunter is an elite player and, and i don't think that that's a hot take at all by any means i, I think he's an elite player and he's going to do really well at colorado but when you look at the the run game i, I just don't see how you run behind this offensive line and it doesn't have anything to do with the running backs. I think Cavassia Smoke is going to be a, a great player. If the offensive line can't push, you can't get anything established. So if you can find a way to maybe move the pocket a little bit for him and, and you know, get, get Shadur Sanders, maybe he can scramble and create some running. That way, if you find a way to maybe get some zone schemes set up so that, you know, if, if just one guy can win his assignment, you can run behind him. That might be the way that they have to go. But right now, I, I don't know what you're looking at to watch a dominant run game. And I think it works the same way on the defense. The corners are going to be just fine. The, the secondary is going to be really good. They're going to be able to rush the passer. But I don't think they're going to be able to really, you know, bow up when they need to in the middle and, and stop the run. And, you know, you see this a lot of times with defenses where, you know, they'll rank really, really high in one aspect because they were really, really bad in the other aspect. So this this Colorado team might end up, you know, top 10, top 20 in pass defense because when opposing offenses line up across from them, they say, we're just going to run the football. <laughs> we're just going to run the ball all day. We're going to play ball control and dominate. And they have some good teams on that schedule that can do that as well. If you look at it, you know, Nebraska is going to be able to run the ball, I think. Oregon, USC, you know, UCLA, Utah at the end of the year, Oregon State especially. I mean, there's going to be some really good running teams on this schedule. And, and those are the places where I think they get dominated. Those are the places where I think they really struggle to stop any of that. And when you have a good run game, you can, you know, hit you with some play action and everything else. So, look, I, I'm not saying that I think things are going to go really poorly for the Buffaloes. Again, I have them at five and seven. That's a massive step in the right direction. But if you can't stop the run, you can't run effectively – Road games get harder, big games get harder, games that when, when it matters and it's third and three and you just got to find a way to pick up those three yards to keep the drive going, that's really hard to do when you can't run the football. And so I think that's going to be your big struggle this year with Colorado, albeit five and seven smashes the over, over under right now three and a half. Yeah. And five wins is a massive step in the right direction as they enter the Big 12. Yeah, I think that's an important point. I mean, you know, we haven't necessarily agreed – with the Vegas lines very often on this show. I mean, there have been some that have been right on the number, but it seems like a lot of a lot of our predictions have a team comfortably covering the over, comfortably going under. Um, Colorado, I think, is a decent line because five and seven, four and eight seems much more realistic to me than two or three wins does, right? Now, the one thing I will say that Colorado fans, I think, should should levy their expectations a little bit i don't i don't think the secondary is going to be elite this year you're you're relying on travis hunter who yes is is a very good corner i'm curious to see what he can do against these pac-12 wide receivers which yeah. there's one thing that the pac-12 is going to do this year they're going to throw the ball a lot um mm -hmm. even the the teams that you know i think are going to struggle 
to get wins, Arizona, Arizona State, uh, those teams, you've still got some really good wide receivers and, yeah. and, and QBs that are going to sling the rock, right? Cormani McLean's going to get picked on. I know he's a five-star, but he's a true freshman, right? He's yeah. never played at this level. And to expect that there either won't be lumps or that he's going to play above average defense without seeing anything on the field, I, I believe is a little bit of a mistake. So for that reason, you know, I, I think they have a very good season. I also have them going at five and seven, and I say very good season, relative to what it's been in the past, right? Right. I think five and seven is a tremendous year one. Folks hear five and seven from us and they think we're sliding Colorado. We think they they think we don't believe in prime as a coach, as a developer. I think the jury's still out on both of those counts. But saying five and seven in year one, when he's brought in something like fifty total transfers from both the division one and division two levels, that's not a slight. That is a hearty round of applause. Yeah. Uh, I think Colorado is going to be a competitive factor uh, over the next couple of years in the Big 12. But as far as their Pac-12 swan song goes, even being mentioned in the conversation for a bowl game, I, I think is a tremendous success. Well, and let's be honest about it, too. If they go five and seven, Dion's going to dominate the portal next year. He'll He'll yeah. end up with the number one class yeah. by a long shot. He's going to get almost anyone he wants because – they're going to look at that. They're going to say they're switching conferences to I, I think a lot of people would say that with Texas and Oklahoma out of the Big 12, it's a lot more wide open. That may not necessarily be true, but that'll be national perception. And I think you're looking at that saying, well, here's their chance. Here's their chance to go in there to a new conference and prove that they can dominate and be the big dog in, in that conference. And so I think you get a lot of pretty top level transfers, kind of the same what was, you know, TCU did this year with you know, getting some of those top guys from Bama when they were looking for places to go and, and, you know, kind of dominating in that way. I think you're going to see a pretty massive turnover uh, if they can go five and seven. So take the step in the right direction, you know, take it for what it is, you know, be happy about that for now. Obviously the goal is not five and seven when you bring in Deion Sanders and you're hoping that that's, you know, going to keep moving in the right direction, but year one, five and a seven is a great step in the right direction. And I think should be a, a point of celebration for Colorado fans. If you can get to six, take your bowl game, right? That's, that's awesome for you. Exactly. Take your winnings on hitting the over and uh, go party it up in a bowl game. Yeah. Gracious. Yeah. How about that?